Good morning, guys. It's Monday, the 9th of April, 2018, and this is the next morning briefing. And today we're going to take a look at a couple of things. We're going to take a look at the outlook uh, at the, in the second half of the um, presentation, and we're going to take a look at working out what type of market behavior we're seeing at the moment and whether or not we are either ranging or trending. So what type of strategy should we use depending on that? But we'll start off having a look at the price action from Friday. This at the moment is the four because it stands and we're trading around about 12, 345, 350, somewhere in that zone. So I'm going to open up the, let's just go and use this guy over here. 250 tick chart and I've opened up the price action to start off the Friday morning session. And we'll have a look and see if there's any opportunities to use our tools and uh, get a feel for what the market's doing. Now the first thing that I would notice here, well, two things that I would notice is that we do have a pretty clear bullish range, uh, bullish trend, should I say here. But we've also got something a little bit more immediate than that, which is this. And I've come to the end of the price action, so I don't know how if I can extend this through. Let's maybe try that. Maybe if I keep that extended, it will go as price action uh, starts to catch up. So it'll be interesting to see how that line develops. And I guess the first obvious thing you'd notice from price action from Friday was the gap. And we had a pretty clear attempt to try and close the gap. And this was its first run. It was about halfway, just over halfway. So it didn't quite manage to completely close it. Um, but it starts to form an idea that we've got a pretty clear low down here. Um, I'd maybe just kind of ignore the low just for the moment, but just see how things play on. So it's just had a second attempt here. And what is interesting is just this little cluster of price action uh, in here. I'll draw a line over it for the moment, but that kind of base here is, uh, is fairly interesting. We'll just see it form up a little bit more. Because depending on which way you look at this, you could see that as a bit of support. In fact, you could even see that as action up there. So you can use this ACR line set. Now ACR stands for action center reaction. And so you need a center line for this or a multi pivot line. And once you've got your center line, you'll often see action on the first side of it. And then you'd see opposite and equal reaction on the other side. So in this particular case, if this was a valid example, what would happen is you'd see price start to form this level of support around the center line, which is what's happened here on a, um, a small scale. You'll see this shoot up for action, which is just a bit of a, a quick, fast price action, takes on some action, and then you get a, a retracement back to the original center line. Now, if that center line is broken, <coughs> excuse me, it offers an opportunity potentially to short down to the reaction line. And if it was the other way around and it started lower, then that would have been your action line. And if it breaks higher, then this would have been your reaction line. So it depends on which way price was forming. In this case, center line's here, the action line is up there. And that would be the opposite and equal reaction if it gets there down there. So it'd be good to watch that play out and form and we'll just maybe see um, what we get. I'm just gonna just quickly test, to see whether this function works. It does. All right, well, it's cost us a little bit, but that's fine. It's only uh, giving you an idea. So you see it form out and see it, see it uh, start to play and whether or not it continues is another uh, another thing. So it started to break here, it's pierced that. So you might sort of say to yourself, okay, well, I'm gonna try short. You're not really getting an ideal reward to risk ratio for this. So this would be more of a kind of a scalping type strategy. But if you did it and you were to sell it and you were to have your stop loss above this reaction, uh, this action line here, shall I say, and you wanted to come down and test that action, <laughs> get my terminology correct, Chris. Um, reaction line as your target, and we'll see whether it plays. And we'll just take a look and see if there's anything else that's forming here. And It's pretty much sideways price action. So you'll notice that price takes a, a dive through the center line. So you've got to start to think to yourself, maybe there's an opportunity for this to get down there now. 
It does, tags the reaction line with a mini double bottom there, which is interesting. And then you might even start to think to yourself, is that what would be a, a mountain type formation, which we look at and look for in structure <clears throat> to use our pitchforks. And in this particular case, if it's a mountain type formation, i.e. the base of the second part of the move pretty much gets to the, the low of the uh, first part, then it's a, a mountain. If it was the other way around, it would be a valley. And when you get these kind of setups, you can use modified shift, uh, shift, should I say, uh, forks as opposed to just regular pitch forks. They're calculated in a slightly different way. And from there, you'd be able to sort of say to yourself, okay, if that's the confirmed low, then um, you know, ideally you probably want to get a test of that lower median line parallel first. You could maybe take a long up towards the median line. And again, it's more of a kind of a scalp in this particular time frame, we'll see how that works out. So you might say that, well, that's a pretty much a test. You've got a test of the reaction line there as well. So maybe you take a long from there and it will just be based on the fact that you've had your mount in form. Uh, you could probably put the stop loss underneath the previous low or even this low here, because if it takes that out, then it's a different kind of structure that's forming. And you'd look to target your median line, which would be somewhere up there. And the lines are getting a little bit messy at the moment because there's lots of things going on on the chart, but hopefully you can still see through that. And you start to see how things play out. So it takes a move up towards the median line, doesn't quite get there, turns around, has a bit of a retrace, but you'll notice that we've got a bit of a zigzag there as well. Do you see this? You've got a high here, wide range bar that takes that out, and then price action sits on that area and uses it as support. So the previous mini resistance become support and this is kind of a swap a swap zone because you were trending lower high there's a low there there's a lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high higher low takes out the previous one that's a change in behavior so that's an area where price has swapped and so you then start to see whether or not that is the area and you could even get long there if you believe that it was and then price continues and it hits the target for that median line. So again, an interesting tool, you might even say that that's actually a balance point because it's a swap zone and maybe there's a 50% point there. So you could start to say to yourself, okay, well, I think that's probably gonna to start to extend higher simply because it's a balance area, a balance point, it's a swap zone. So it's a zigzag, it's all sorts of things in there. And you see whether or not price comes up to tag that area. And again, if you really were aggressive, you could even scout that um, to start getting long. Uh, to reach that uh, target line. Now, I'm saying the word scalp simply because the way I normally trade is to use a reward to risk ratio of at least two, three, four to one. In this particular case, it's negative reward to risk. You're risking more than you would actually be trading uh, for your reward. So maybe you would try and get a slightly better reward to risk ratio, but it's not three to one, it's nowhere near. So these would certainly not um, be trades that I would share on the Signal channel because I'm looking for three to one and sometimes people are late to getting their trades on. So this would just simply be a scalp that I would broadcast in the premium channel um, if the opportunity was there and we can get it. Or it would be tools that you can use yourself to actually identify this stuff once you've identified a change in behavior. So again, not suggesting that this is the way that you should be trading, but it's just another way that uh, opportunities can come along. So in this particular case, didn't quite get there, but it was not far away, was it? You'll see that uh, it was just underneath that uh, little area. Uh, but it gives you an idea of how you might want to use it and how you might want to play with that tool. So I'll just remove that balance point. Hopefully the changing behavior part worked there and uh, didn't confuse too many people. All right, so what else have we got? So there's another thing that's starting to form here. And I might just, I don't know if I can change the color on this, but. Uh, we'll leave it there for the moment. Might just take this fork out just to start tidying things up a bit. Here we go. One thing that you start to notice here, you've got these two peaks, one there, one there. And those two peaks, you could start to form a center line with. And you could then say, well, that's your action point there. So it's just another example of how you might want to use an ACR line set. So two points. Now, ideally, you, what you want to see here is a multi-pivot line. Um, and a multi-pivot line would probably have more than two touches. It's only got two, so it's not ideal. Um, 
But, you know, we'll watch it and see if we get a reaction on the other side. So uh, forms an action point down there, comes back up to the center line, breaks through the center line, kisses the center line goodbye on the way higher, and it's still trending, still creating those higher highs and higher lows. So the behavior has not changed yet. And what you'd be looking for is a, a test of this reaction line. Now, bearing in mind this is a Friday, um, so I don't know how active the afternoon session will be. So you're really looking to kind of get your trading done in the morning session. Um, but as you'll notice, this has created a bit of a sine wave sort of shape. Um, it started to retrace back down. You start to think to yourself, maybe this is going to head back towards the center line and it would allow you another opportunity to get long. Um, maybe you'd need to even bail out because this idea has not worked out as expected. It's always a difficult decision knowing how to play these uh, particular setups. And... starts to form this kind of expanding pivot megaphone type setup where it looks like it wants to uh, clean the book <laughs> well there you go so it did take out the reaction line but then it did also take out the lows and it has just swept all of the kind of stop losses out either side you've had people with stop losses under that you have had people with stop losses above that and it's just swiped them out and that was probably nfp um, remember NFP, so non-farm payroll from Friday. Um, that would, yeah, probably have been the time that that would have been released. So um, I wasn't trading for pretty much the majority of this part of the session. I wasn't around the computer. I wanted to get away uh, for the simple fact that trading NFP is a gamble. And there's just no point in gambling. So you do get a bit of a reaction. I think it actually continued higher and... Um, You'll notice from here, once you've settled after NFP, that's when you can start to get something going. Somewhere around here, so you've got the initial moves, it starts to expand, wipes and clears the book, then it starts to form a mini trend, retraces back to somewhere into the middle of that balance area. And from here, maybe you could start to look at observing price action for clues. Okay, well, the only clue really that you can kind of gain from that is that if this had started to head long now, that's probably diver a divergence there. I don't know if any of you have got an RSI on, but I would examine that area there. But the bit that stands out is you just start to wonder whether or not this mini retracement is a reaction leg and whether or not we're going to form some kind of zigzag situation here. You can pull your balance point tool somewhere through the middle of that. I don't know where you draw it, maybe somewhere there. And you look to reach somewhere in there. As a, if it completes its balance point. It's moving my, uh, <laughs> moving my drawings. I <laughs> don't know why it did that. But it gives you an idea if you can see that somewhere out there is a, a, a test of that balance point zone just on this little peak. And so there's some just some simple ideas of how you would use these tools. Second half of the session on a Friday, probably no point in really getting too attached to any of the price action. I think we even consolidated. But the last observation here is, do you see that first line we drew, that that um, the down slope of this line across the price action from Thursday? It gets a, a tag, a test, on uh, just after the NFP on Friday, which I thought was quite interesting. So we'll keep an eye out for maybe an underside test of that line. All right, so there's some of the tools and how we'd use them. Um, if we go and take a look at the price action for today and just sort of see how we might want to map um, some ideas and outlooks for today. This is a fork that we've got drawn on from Friday. And uh, we can probably go ahead and just turn that off for the moment. And let's just, just map this out very quickly. So. You've pretty clearly got a pivot there. You've got a pivot here. And that is a, uh, a confirmed low here now because price action has taken out the previous high. Yep. So the fork that we previous had, previously had can probably be updated now and I would even start to go back to these three pivots here and we'll just take a look at that for the moment. Okay, so the center line isn't really getting much of a touch, so I don't know how strong that is, but you'll notice that the 
upper median line parallel got, got a test, a couple of tests actually, on Friday, which does suggest that it would like to move down towards the median line. However, we've gapped above the upper median line parallel. So one option would be to get a test maybe even somewhere around there where it starts to close the gap but walk down the upper median line parallel that's an opportunity possibly um, to get into a trade uh, that would probably be my favorite option um, the alternative view to well, the, using this fork is that this is pretty much following a failure there was no real attempt to get down to this median line it was therefore a fail um, and we can probably start to ignore that that's actually even going to be valid uh, anymore but keep an eye on the upper median line parallel that's one option that I want to be watching out for so we are continuing to trend so at the moment we s we're starting to threaten the idea that we are going to be breaking out of this wide range that we've been trapped in for some time and uh, we are actually looking to form a new bullish uh, trend so the mean reversion strategies are not ideal if uh, price action starts to trend so we probably need to be careful using BBRSI and maybe start to just focus back on our swings and start to anticipate the waves and um, the movements of the swings and the minors and majors and the impulse legs and things like that. So it's worth keeping an eye out for... Let's get back to this. Worth keeping an eye out for a retracement back towards the upper median line parallel and that gives us an opportunity to get long um, or start to look at how these swings are forming and whether or not we can get a more aggressive entry if we want it to be long down here. So that's the bullish idea. The bearish idea is just simply that we're coming towards exhaustion and if you look on the daily chart here, we're on the kissing the underside of this center line which is a large uh, ACR line set that goes back to November, October from last year. And we're just simply in the stage of coming to test that before we get a rejection lower. Um, it's still heavy as far as some of the uh, risk sentiment is at the moment, but with the trade wars and all this kind of stuff, it does support the idea that we can move lower. But I think I'm just going to stick to the technicals on this one for the moment, and I'll just continue to follow the trend until the trend is no longer there to be followed. So that gives an idea of the thoughts. Um, uh, I hope that makes sense. I hope you followed me through that. And we'll be back again tomorrow with another one of these. So uh, be sure to join us. Find the link in the broadcast channel. If you're watching this video on YouTube, then you've got links to content in the description below. And you can contact me on Telegram if you've got any questions. But for today, I'll leave it there. And um, I'm just going to stop the recording and answer any questions if you have any in the room. Take care, guys.